I'd like now to introduce you to Ashleen Lacey as she gets herself ready. Yeah, don't stick yeah. it in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, Thanks. Ashling is a certified athletic therapist and a second year um, MSc student in the School of Health and Human Performance in DCU. Um, she is there studying the risk factors for running related injuries. Um, to date, she has completed a lot of qualitative research investigating runners' use of running technologies, uh, their engagement in long-term research, and their perceptions around running-related injuries. So I think what she is going to talk to you about here this morning is essentially what you've been telling her. And I think it's a, it's a very interesting uh, talk. Uh, Ashling is a Gaelic football and basketball player, and as she calls herself, a very recreational runner. Yeah, off-season, <laughs> reluctantly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, perfect. Thanks, Brian. Um, so I'm going to chat to you today about research we've been doing in DCU on runners' perspectives of running-related injuries. So firstly, what is a running-related injury? So running injuries are different to other high-impact sport injuries like ACL tears in football or shoulder dislocations in rugby. And they're chronic and insidious in onset, so they develop gradually over time. But how are they defined in, in the research? So there have been a variety of definitions used to define injury in research, and they use different criteria. And this makes it hard to compare findings between studies. So a consensus definition was developed in 2015 that defined a running-related injury as musculoskeletal pain in the lower limbs or lower back. So that was the first thing, it had to have pain. Secondly, it either had to cause a stoppage or restriction to training or acquire medical attention. So we felt there were a couple of limitations to this uh, this definition of injury because it doesn't quite capture that chronic onset of injury. Um, it also uses a time loss definition, so it has to cause a restriction or stoppage to training when we know that runners continue to train with injuries. And thirdly, it was developed through the opinions of researchers, which were very appropriate, but we felt we wanted to include the opinions of the people who experience these injuries. So we conducted a focus group study where we interviewed 31 runners across seven focus groups. Uh, we had 13 male and 18 female, and they were from a variety of running backgrounds. So we had some sprinters, some middle distance, marathon, ultra marathon. And um, each focus group was about two hours in duration. And they were recorded and transcribed. Um, and then we analyzed the data. So we came up with a number of core categories, teams and sub teams from this data. We extracted the data and then analyzed the data. And we came up with our findings. So when we firstly posed the question to runners about how they define and describe injury they came up with a number of expected terms that we thought would come up that mapped quite well with this definition of injury things like pain being unable to run frustrated limping a bit affecting their daily life or needing medical attention but as we kind of chatted more and discussed further we got a more nuanced version of injury and a more pr progressive ex uh definition of injury I suppose and things like discomfort or tightness stiffness awareness being cautious running through it and ignoring it these terms came up so we combined all of these together and we came up with our findings and this is what we found so the first thing is that runners perceive injury on a continuum and this continuum goes from its lowest point at running smooth to its highest point as a career-ending injury and there are seven other points then along this continuum that run through discomfort niggle, twinge, persistent niggle, non-responsive injury, an injury with an acute effect, and an injury with a chronic effect. And these points were arrived at based on how runners physically described each stage, how they psychologically described it, the effect it had on their performance, and the effect it had on their daily life. We also asked them how runners manage injury, and typically they do three things. So either they do nothing, they use self-management strategies, or they look to... Um, towards external sources. Um, then we also found that this is very individual and how this is perceived and managed is different for each runner. And a lot of different factors come in to influence this. So things like age or previous injury or whether someone has children or their mood on a particular day, this all comes into play to influence how this is perceived. Um, so I'm going to just briefly 
chat through each point and describe what each one is. So the first one is running smooth. And this was the first, the lowest level. And it was injury free and pain free. Um, there was full training. So there was no interference to, um, to training. There was no effect on daily life and no management. So it was fairly straightforward. The next stage was, uh, was discomfort. And this was the first description of a complaint. And words like stiffness or tightness or tiredness were used to describe this stage. But it was something that was temporary. So typically it might be felt before your session. You'd go for a run and then it'd be gone. You'd loosen out. Um, again, full training could continue. There was no influence to training. There was no effect on daily life. But runners discussed this kind of mental fatigue. They felt sluggish at this point. It was kind of psychologically, they just felt a bit slow. Um, for the majority, there was no management involved, although some started to increase their stretching and they might turn towards external sources like looking up um, exercises on YouTube or then chatting to their friends, typically people they would run with, so people with experience of, of running. The next point was a word used by every runner in every focus group, and we wanted to find out what is a niggle. Um, and a lot of different terms were used to describe this and... These, these were some of the most common discomfort, low pain, and an increased awareness of an area. Um, but how it differed from the previous point was that it's something that's repeated. So it happens more than once and you're more aware of it and it's kind of niggling and it's going on and on. Um, and it was also described as this kind of constant state. So people constantly have niggles and they live in this niggle city. Um, it was just standard. But again, for the majority, there was full training. So people train and run through niggles. At this point, people started, some people started to change their training. So they'd either reduce their distance or their pace, or they'd focus more on their warm up. So do a longer, more intense warm up. Again, it didn't filter into the rest of their day, but they were cautious and had a bit of a fear of a more serious injury. So they're starting to think, should this be something I'm worried about? Um, the majority, again, don't really manage it. They, some, a few more start to increase their stretching. They take a rest day, maybe. Again, they're looking at Google, YouTube, or chatting to their friends. Um, the twinge, this is an outlier to the rest of, of the continuum, and that's why it sits above, because it's something that's quite intense and painful, and things like darting pain or cramp were used to describe it, but it's short-lived, and it kind of comes and goes really quickly. But it's severe enough that it causes someone to have to either slow down during their run or stop their run. But it doesn't last, and it's not there the next time you run. Um, Again, it still didn't filter into the rest of their day, but it's annoying. And it's something that they think, should I be worried about this? Ah, probably not. It's not, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, at this point, all runners are doing something. So either with self-management, so they're taking another rest day, they're using ice or they're stretching, they're Googling, they're chatting to their friends, or now they're looking for more expert opinion and they're turning to a coach. Uh, moving back onto the main continuum, this is this persistent niggle and how it differs from the niggle is that it's more intense and it's lasting longer. So there's no longer description of kind of more benign terms like stiffness or tightness and it's now pain. And it's something that's persistent and it's not going away. Um, by this point, all runners are starting to change their load. So either overall load, distance, intensity, or more rest days are being taken here. Again, there's no real effect on the rest of their day. It's still only during their running session that they feel it. But now they're worried about it. So now we have anxiety about it. And this is something that I'm worrying about. Um, again, alter training is how they manage it. Or they're starting to take medication to manage their pain. Or using ice and heat to manage pain. So the kind of self-management is more looking towards pain management. They're still chatting to friends and coaches. And now we have the first onset of some sort of medical intervention, so whether it's physio um, or AT. This brings us up to about the halfway mark, and this, this non-responsive injury was a point described by runners that all attempts to manage the complaint this far have failed, and now they need to make a decision of what am I going to do? Do I stop running? Do I power through? Do I go get help? What, like it's not responding to what I'm doing, so, what, so how do I manage it? And we're now into more pain, so pain is ramping up, it's something, it's still persistent, and now it's constant. So it's every run, all the time I feel it. Again, how they're managing it is with reduced load. They're starting to introduce some sort of walk-run strategy. They feel they shouldn't be running, but a lot will continue to run. But some will choose now to stop running at this point. And this is the point now where it starts to drip into the rest of their day. So things like 
climbing the stairs or bringing in the shopping. Now they feel it outside of their normal running session. And again, they're worried about it and they're concerned about it. Um, Self-management involves load management, uh, joint supports and like checking their footwear, maybe using orthotics, different kind of external sources of help and more reliance on that medical intervention. This point then is the point that maps closest with this consensus definition. So we can see all the detail before this that is potentially being missed if we only rely on this consensus definition. Um, so pain is really starting to ramp up here. We're talking severe discomfort, high pain, sharp pain. A few will continue running again with altered training. So either reduce load, distance, pace, but the majority will stop now in the short term. So this is for a number of weeks they've had to stop running. Um, again, pain is outside their normal session and they're starting to make conscious efforts to offload the injured air. So they're driving instead of walking. Um, and again, they're very worried about it. This is kind of increasing all the time. They're still doing pain relief and um, management and heavier reliance now on external management strategies. So this is the second last point then. And this is um, an, an injury with a chronic effect. And again, the physical pain is starting to ramp up again. We're talking extreme discomfort, sharp pain, and very high pain. Um, all runners now have stopped at this point, so no one's running, and a lot are actually unable to run. So this is a long-term stop to running for a number of months. Um, pain outside running again, similar to the previous point. They're making those conscious efforts to offload it. They're still very worried about it, and now they're getting frustrated. Um, less reliance on physio or AT input and more kind of specialist intervention and we're looking at imaging and scans to try to find out what's going on. Then the maximum point of this continuum was this career-ending injury and this is something that was associated with very high pain and inability to run and potentially never running again. So again, frustration and now the onset of depression at this point. Um, kind of last resort medical specialist and potential surgery to manage this this um this complaint so i suppose what did we want to take from this and we wanted to highlight this progressive nature of injury and hopefully correlate that with this progressive perception of injury um, and highlight that this continuum is progressive and that runners will move along it in a fluid manner depending on how they manage it but again it's very individual for each runner and that all these factors are going to influence how it's perceived so not all runners agreed on each point and you may not agree on every point but Hopefully, runners will move along it as they perceive it. Um, and then how we hope to, uh, to use this. So the ultimate aim is to reduce the amount of running-related injuries. Um, so we hope to use this continuum in a smartphone app to monitor runners over a 12-month period and monitor their training and use this continuum to capture all these stages of injury and monitor these complaints and hopefully no career-ending injuries. Um, I don't know how we're doing for time, but I think that's me. Do we have any questions?